Split Raw is a shooting and editing technique that allows you to capture detail throughout a high contrast scene without the need to use filters or to shoot HDR. It simply requires that you shoot two exposures. So here we have the foreground exposure, so everything in the foreground is exposed correctly. And then you shoot a second exposure for the sky and then you just need to get those processed almost identically in Lightroom or other raw editing software. Open those images up into Photoshop and then you can merge the two shots together to get that detail throughout the whole scene. I always start editing on the lighter foreground image. So I've already done the editing work on this shot here, so there's nothing that I need to do and then I copy all of the settings over to the sky image. So with the foreground image processed and selected, just hold down the shift key on the keyboard and click on the sky image, and then just hit the sync button. If any of the boxes are unchecked, just click check all, and then hit synchronize. So one thing I haven't done in my foreground shot is use any graduated filters to control the sky exposure because I don't need to. So what we're gonna do now is just click onto that sky image and there are a few things that we're gonna to need to change here for this particular shot. So with the foreground image, there was some haze in the background so I've increased e-haze. So I'm just gonna take that back down to zero. I also darkened that exposure slightly so I'm just gonna take that back to zero as well. But what I think I'm going to do is just see how far I can push the brightness because the sky is quite dark along the horizon. So I'm just going to hold down the Alt key. If you're using a Mac, that would be the Option key. And then I'm just going to take exposure over to the right. So as you see, there's red, yellow and white in there. So the white is where the detail has blown out completely. The red, it's blowing out and the yellow, it's, it's getting very close. So that is just way too bright. So what I'm going to do is just take it up a tiny amount and then with the blacks I'm just going to lift those slightly as well. So again I can use the Alt or Option key. So I'm just going to take that up to about 40 and then just bring the highlights down a tiny amount. So that's looking good. Now when we toggle between the two you'll see there's quite a big difference but the way that we will edit these will bring them together perfectly. So with both images selected as they are there, just right mouse click and then go to edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So there are the two images opened as layers in Photoshop. If your darker sky image happens to be at the bottom, you can just drag it up to the top of the stack. But before we get started on the masking, I'm just gonna select both and make sure that if there was any movement of the tripod in between the two exposures that everything is aligned. So I'm just gonna then go up to edit, auto align layers, leave projection set to auto, and then hit okay. It may not be necessary, but just in case it's worth doing. So I'm just gonna go around the edges and look for any white around the edge. So it appears that there wasn't any movement. I'm just gonna switch one layer off and have another look. So no, there were no tripod movements, so that's good. But if there were and you end up with a little bit of white, just use the crop tool and maintain the original ratio of the image and then just crop out those white lines if they do appear. So next up, I'm just gonna click on that top layer to make sure that's active. And then I'm gonna click on the add a layer mask icon. So now we have a layer mask attached to that layer. And this is where we can start blending in. So I'm just gonna hold down Control and I to invert that layer mask so that it's not revealing any of that layer and then we're gonna paint it back in now. So next up, just hit D on the keyboard to make sure the default palette colors are set to black and white. We want white to be in the foreground because we're gonna paint onto the mask and reveal this layer. If you need to toggle between the two, you can just hit X on the keyboard and you'll see there that the two colors change. So if you make a mistake, you can paint black in over again or if you want to start again you can just hit shift and f5 and then fill the mask with black so i'm now going to hit b on the keyboard to activate the brush tool and we want to make sure that we have hardness set to zero 
and that it's a reasonably large brush. So I'm just going to make it slightly larger by using the right square bracket key. The left square bracket key makes it smaller, whereas the right makes it larger. And I'm just going to make sure that the opacity of the brush is set to 100. So what I'm going to do now, just holding down shift to get a nice straight line, is run that across the top of the sky. Now I'm going to go up to opacity and I'm going to reduce it to 50% this time. And then I'm going to run it just along here like this. So again, holding down shift to maintain that straight line. And then finally, I'm going to reduce the opacity to 25% and make the brush slightly smaller. And then I'm just going to paint over this area here. So what you need to be aware of is when you reduce the opacity of the brush, each pass of the brush adds more to the mask. So if I paint over there, you'll see it adds a darker patch. So I can just use Control and Z to remove that. So you only want to make one pass. If you're not happy with that pass, just use the Control Z or Command Z shortcut to go back a step. So let's take a look at the layer mask and see how it's performing. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on the mask. So you'll see here that what we effectively have is the equivalent of an inverted graduated filter. So we're getting most darkness at the top of the image and then a medium amount in the middle and then towards the bottom along the horizon, it's slightly more reduced again. So we're getting less light through when it translates from black to white. So what I'm gonna do now is just add one more pass of the brush over here and there is the finished image. So what we've effectively achieved here is the exact equivalent of what we would get if we'd used graduated filters at the point of shooting. But if for any reason you don't have your filters with you or you just need to work quickly and don't have time to put them on, this is a great technique that you can use to maintain detail throughout the scene.